want to talk about the importance of disconnecting and about how to set yourself up to really disconnect. And I saw this meme while I was away and it just really made me laugh because like in Europe, the, an autoresponder in Europe would say, um, sorry, I'm on vacation. I will talk to you in, in a month and a half when I'm back. And in North America, it would say, I, I'm really sorry that I missed your email. I'm having surgery, but just leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And while maybe a little bit of an exaggeration, I, I feel like maybe it hits the mark a little bit too closely. So we often maybe take a day off or take a vacation, but we still feel this need to answer all the questions, to answer the emails. And what we actually are doing is teaching people that our boundaries aren't um, solid. So if I go away and I say, I am not responding to emails and then I respond to emails, people learn that they can email me and they can expect that response. And so it was really hard, but my response, my auto response was, thank you very much for reaching out. I'm really sad that I've missed, um, missed a chance to connect with you. I'm away and really focusing on my family for the next three weeks and I look forward to connecting when I'm back. So I was very clear about my expectations and then I had to set myself up for success because it's really easy just to like fire a quick reply. So when I went away, I did a couple things. Number one is I took all my email off my phone except for my my main my main one. And I needed that because I had booked tours with using that email and I needed to be kept up to date. So I made sure that my autoresponder was on and I took off all my other emails so I wouldn't be even tempted to know. And when I went, went away, I remember a while ago, like when I used to go away, like I just like to kind of keep an eye on what's going on and, and know what's going up. But what happened is my mind then just kind of got sucked back into that work, into that um, that distraction, and it wasn't able to focus on really relaxing and the time with my family or my friends. So a few years ago, when I went away, I actually took email off my phone, except for except for my main email, and it felt liberating. I'm like, oh, the stuff will still be there when I get back. And if I have done a good job of leaving, then I will have set myself up with people who can cover me. And so that becomes really important is to do that pre-work. And then the second thing that was really, really hard was to sometimes people ask for something. I'm like, oh, I could write them and say, OK, I'm, I'm actually away. Could you deal with this? Um, or could you contact this person? Or I could forward it to that person. If they found my autoresponder, I said, I am away. And I had given the, all the people who needed to know who else to contact, I had given them that information. So it was just a, it could serve as a reminder to them and I, I disengaged. And when I came back, they had, they had reached out to the other person and the other person had taken care of it that didn't need me. And it taught them that the, um, to follow kind of the right pr uh, procedure. So that was really, really important. So there was uh, a couple, blogs that I wrote. One is the one when I got back about why our boundaries are so hard. And the second one when I was looking through um, was how to say yes. And how to say yes happens when I learn to say no. And it seems counterintuitive, but when I was reading The Coaching Habit by Michael Bungay Stanier, he has seven essential questions. And one of them that I absolutely love is if I say yes to this, what am I saying no to? And I just want to walk through a couple examples of how this might play out. And so uh, just yesterday, I got an email with an, a really interesting offer. Um, would you like to be on this board? It has the chance to hand out um, grants and to really improve um, this certain demographic. And I thought, oh, that'd be really cool. And as I sat down, I asked myself the question, if I say yes to this, what am I saying no to? So I looked at the time commitment to, okay, it wasn't huge, but it was one more thing that would take me away from what I really want to do. And that is build this leadership business. And so I, um, I thought about it, but it, 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 if I'm saying yes to this, I'm saying no to things that I really, really want to focus on at this time in my life. And so I did, I said, no, thank you. And no is a complete sentence. Somebody told me once, I don't need to explain why. I just need to, I can be polite about it. If for my people pleasers, yeah, um, you can say um, yes and sometimes, 
Um, I had a friend who came to me with uh, an opportunity and she was given the opportunity to speak at an event on a topic she's passionate about um, and except that the event was in a week and the person who had invited them had, hadn't given her enough notice. And as we're talking through it, I said, it's perfectly fine to say, I'm really interested in this and the timing doesn't really work because I don't think I can give it my best. So what would she say no to? She would be saying no at this point in time to working on a project that she's really passionate about trying to get up and off the ground. And so the timing wasn't right. She doesn't have to say no, this doesn't work. She could say yes and I would really like to do this and unfortunately this timing doesn't work. So if, you, if it is something that you do want to do and now isn't a good time or something, see if you can figure it out to yes and, not yes but, try yes and. So yes, and this would actually work better for me. And just ask. I think lots of times people will ask us for things and they think that it needs to be an immediate, um, an immediate answer. And we look at somebody will ping me on Teams and I'll be like, oh, I have to get back to them right away. Somebody will email me. I'll think I have to get back to them right away. And a really a better answer is when do you need an answer by? And give yourself the time because we put this self-imposed limit on ourselves, this expectation that I have to do it now, maybe they don't need it now. When you're asking for things, give them that expectation. I don't need an answer now, but if I could have it by Wednesday um, at eight o'clock, that would be really great. Does that work for you? And so really, as we ask for things, because I think in today's world, we expect an answer now. I text and I'm like, if I don't see the three dots, I'm like, okay, like they're not answering me, where are they? And we expect somebody to answer the phone all the time to give us the answer right now. And we need to really readjust that expectation because it's not healthy. It's not healthy for other people. It's not healthy for us. So how can you set up boundaries so that you are asking people um, that you are setting yourself up to be, uh, to be able to respect them? Whatever boundaries that you set, don't set boundaries you aren't willing to uphold. Um, and if you need an accountability partner to say, okay, um, somebody's asking me this and I really want to say yes, but the answer really needs to be no, then talk that through. Find somebody who will support you through that. Find coaching. So um, that is my big um, thing on boundaries. Uh, I'll share one more story. I was offered the opportunity to, I was offered the opportunity to speak at an event and it would be my target audience. It would be really great. And I was trying to come up with um, an idea about what I would speak with and I was just feeling a lot of pressure and I wasn't able to focus on some other projects that I really needed to get done. So what I wrote back is this is an incredible opportunity and I'd really be interested when you offer this in the in the spring. But at this point in time, I think I would just like to come as a participant and, um, and absorb. And the answer back was, wow, I love that. Thank you so much. I will absolutely keep you in mind for the spring. So I think when we set those boundaries, it serves us well, but it also helps other people understand. And so I'll tell one last story. My daughter was asked to join um, the soccer team and she's really been, I admire her ability to set boundaries and to maintain them. She isn't a, a people pleaser um, necessarily. And so I saw the coach ask her and talk to her and I said like, well, what did you say to him? And she said, I said, no, thank you. I said, oh, and, and how, like, how is that? You didn't say I'll think about it because I have no intention of saying, of, of saying yes. And so it would just be cruel to let him think that I might say yes. And I thought that was really interesting way of putting it. So if I don't, if I'm not clear, if I don't say no, no, thank you. I can say it in a nice way. If I don't say that, am I, am I leading them on to believe that I might be interested? And that's not fair to them because maybe they have somebody else that they could ask for that position, for that project, for that team. So if you think about that, that clearest kind um, phrase that Bernie Brown uses all the time. So. I'd really love to hear if you have examples of how you've set boundaries or um, phrasing that you'd love. I'd love to see it in the comments.